couple of minutes which are not available but will be next time. Um, and then I think the next agenda item is to kind of, um, we had talked about just kind of where we thought we, uh, kind of a sneak peek of where we think, best case, maybe where we ended the mm -hmm. year 17. So I don't know if Tom yeah, or... Yeah, I'll do my best to muddle through this. It's never been an easy <coughs> conversation even with uh, Ruth leading it. Um, <laughs> what she's done is essentially a variance uh, analysis. So she's looked really exclusively on the uh, expenditures and revenues and yeah. has a you know, a fairly high degree of certainty from that perspective. There's a couple of other final pieces revolving around special revenues and capital projects that may have some effect on this. But um, I apologize for this sheet being a bit busy, but there's, uh, there's a lot of relevant information on here. So quickly, just let me orient you to it. The top of the page uh, is audited numbers for uh, the end of uh, 16. That's fiscal year seven, uh, yeah, 16. Um, and then the middle, uh, we're just showing you based on our fund balance policy, showing a little history there. Mm -hmm. And the middle part of the page shows, um, based on your on the existing policy, what our targets are and where we are relative to that. So you'll see uh, that 6.1 million dollars in unassigned uh, is really the number to look at, and that puts us at about 7.7 percent, as compared to your targets of 8.3, 10, and 12 just to give you a sense of where we are. Uh, and then the bottom third of the sheet uh, is that analysis looking at where we ended um, at the end of June this past this year. And essentially, um, again, the unassigned is the one that the policy concerns itself with, uh, but the total fund, fund balance has risen, uh, we expect, by 648,000 or so. Yeah, can you talk a little bit about that, Tom? Because I, I, you know, I mean, the, the town fund balance—that's a—that's a pretty significant. Yeah, I don't have you know, a surplus. The prior years has been pretty close. There was any contributing factors? On yeah, the, the I was pleased to see it. I was a little surprised. Yeah, I, so. I apologize. I don't have uh, particular <coughs> detail, but I do know that the excise tax that we so far exceeded our budgeted mm -hmm. estimate—that is probably the single biggest reason for that. In that yeah. Um, I also, along with, with Julie Kuchenberger, issued a curtailment order in March, yeah. and I think that helped um, on the expense side. I will provide you more s detail on that kind of variance analysis, uh, but I think those two things together have contributed to that. So we're certainly pleased we put the curtailment in to help, um, and I think this committee was, at least on a quarterly basis, uh, mm -hmm. tracking what was happening on excise, and we yeah, were yeah. really outperforming. Yeah. And I don't expect we'll have that again this year because our sites were raised uh, in our estimate. We, we bumped it up um, considerably, taking this into account. But it does materialize as year-end fund balance. It's, no, it's unexpected revenue. I mean, it's great news. Yes. Yeah. It's, so that curtailment, I mean, do you, do you really think that was a significant contributor to? I think it was more of a contributor on the school side than mine. Yeah. Um, okay. You know, many of my staff said you really didn't need to do that. You know, we're mindful and we're, we only spend what we need anyway. Yeah. So I don't think it it produced huge savings that we wouldn't have seen otherwise, frankly. Um, but it's worth noting. Uh, it's somewhat unprecedented to put that in. Um, I've not done it before in my tenure. But I thought it was appropriate given the circumstance. And I, hmm. I've not considered it yet, but it's certainly something in my, in my sights for this year, um, given some of our conversations around how the future looks. But, that, but that's one of the largest surpluses for the town in several years, isn't it? Well, well I, I, yeah, I, but I think yeah. before we, I mean, it's all relative to the operating budget, right? Because if I'm looking at the sheet correctly, and, and may, I'm, maybe I'm wrong, we're still short of our goal of 8.33%. Mm -hmm. so we're looking at basically a 6.756, which is a great increase, but we're still only 8.16% of our operating budget for 2017. And, and our minimum was 833, right? Well, right. But so, uh, I mean, I, 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 as much as I would love to, I, my initial, when I looked at this, I thought, wow, $12 million in the, in the surplus, that's great. You know, we're, we're, we're in a good spot, but it's unrestricted. The unrestricted you have to yeah. look at. Remember, this committee, this sometime yeah. in the past year, ratcheted up all yeah. those numbers by right. basically right. two percentage points. So we've raised our bar higher. Right. Well, and that's clear. Yeah. I, but I just, I, I mean, so I, I <coughs> That's also going to impact our decisions moving forward. So I'm, I'm, while I'm pleased that it's, we're going in the right direction, mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure that this is really, a, 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 I don't know if it was the right thing to, to bump that 
looking at what we've got looking coming down the road and what's going to happen if we don't hit our 8.33. And we've, we talked about all those things already ahead of time, but right. I'm just hoping that we weren't too premature with setting that bar too high, mm -hmm. knowing that we're... Well, we're, the good news is uh, we have not budgeted use the fund balance on the town side for as long as I can remember. Mm -hmm. So we've mm -hmm. weaned ourselves away from that historical practice. Yeah. Um, and we've been able to contribute uh, in a positive way to the fund balance year over year. So those trends are certainly positive. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and mm -hmm. playing sort of Ruth, I mean, at this point should probably caution us that there's still possibility of adjustments, or, or do we think most of the significant adjustments are accounted for in well, this the, estimate? The footnote she has at the bottom says estimates are subject to change by way of special revenues and capital projects year end estimate uh, adjustments. Yeah. So that's underway as we speak. Um, yeah. Is that usually a significant? <laughs> We've had this conversation hazard, before. Right. I, I'm not going to hazard a guess, but okay. I, for yeah. Ruth to put numbers in print and actually bold them, uh, I think that's meaningful. I'm going to leave it at that. Okay. I think in the past the reason for the hesitation was because there was significant projects and programs or investments that were going on at the time where there mm -hmm. hasn't been that much activity. I mean, there's been activity, but not as significant because there was adjustments that were being made as a result of Wentworth and other activities that were going on where that has settled now. Yeah. I, I would suspect from an accounting perspective that it probably wouldn't be. Yeah, you ask an accountant to be definitive. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They aren't going to until they change their mind tomorrow. Until it's done. <laughs> um, anything else you guys looking at? I, I just want to respond as far as about the policy. So first is that, yes, we did change the policy last year based on a forecast outlook. And I don't think, at least when I recommended it, that it was something that I expected to achieve overnight or in one year. Okay. I think it's, uh, to me, it's a, it's a progressive. And I think that even when we talk, think about how analysts view those policies, it is about how you're achieving it. Because you're going to have to respond to certain circumstances and situations such as we're dealing tomorrow. Um, so it's about how we plan and get to that point. And I think that from an econ personally from an economic outlook, um, for the next three years, I think it's achievable. However, the three years after that, it would need to be, we would need to be cautious. Yeah. You think about the economic cycles that we go through. Yeah. I, my concern is that we're, you know, we're on the one hand, it's almost like talking out of both sides of our mouth. On the one hand, we're cognizant and, and want to be proactive about a $2 million budget shortfall coming right out of the gate next year, yet we're looking at record surpluses here. So right. I just want to make sure that we're balancing. I'm not saying that one supersedes the other. I just want to make sure that we ba we're not sacrificing near-term operational uh, efficiencies and outcomes for long-term savings. I mean, yeah, if I've it's raining, it's raining. I've already you know? scripted um, how I'm going to respond to the rating agencies. I think they will actually give us credit for raising the bar on ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what I know from past uh, conversations with the analysts is that, one, it's most important to have a policy, which we do. Mm -hmm. Secondly, if you have it, you better adhere to it. Mm -hmm. And um, I think, I don't see that will be a negative that we're low uh, because we've self-imposed uh, more financial rigors. So I think that might even be a positive. I don't think it will result in a bond upgrade, but if we can hold our own, yeah. that's good. <coughs> a couple of years of that. And we made forward progress from last year. So right, and we're showing that. Yeah. We're yeah. showing uh, yeah. good uh, prudence <coughs> in that respect. Okay, you guys good? I am. Um, next agenda item was to talk a little bit, kind of, kind of go back and revisit the dashboard. And I know, Larissa, that you're probably getting tired of coming back and talking to us about the, the okay. MIPS. But we did talk last time about which ones to put on here. And then we kind of asked, is there some way we could start to look at some of, you know, the metrics or some benchmarks to kind of gauge where we are? Looks like you've done a lot of work to kind of put that together. And so I don't know if there's anything new you want to tell us before we um, launch or whether you have questions for us. That only that I know that the <coughs> acceptable range, so that attempt on that far left-hand column, I know it's clunky. It is I not, like it. Um, and, but it was an opportunity to kind of show what it could look like, to kind of show, you know, some sort of range activity. Um, what I would really like to have happen before I revisit this as <laughs> Again. a staff member is really to um, have you guys talk about what do you want to have as policy statements that are going to form those ranges for ourselves? Because some of them really don't have um, a clear credit industry standard that makes 
sense for us to adopt. And, and one of those things that, and we talked somewhat at length last time that we met, um, things like debt per capita, it's a really a challenging range to set forward. We have, so we do have from Standard & Poor in 2008, we have the thing that you guys have all seen from Joe Qatar. Mm -hmm. um, these are from 2008. Standard & Poor has updated as of 2013, but they have not used the same setup. They have not had a very clear delineation of if you fall in this range, we consider that to be high, moderate, low. Um, they have a scoring system, and you know, in a quick cursory glance, the lower, it's kind of like golf, the lower your score, the better off you are. Um, and in, in a quick cursory glance, when I went through the metrics that we have, and, and the tables are set up so that um, you have kind of like one measure going across this way and one measure going across that way, and you're kind of matching up to see where you are. And we are mostly in the ones with a couple of twos that we that we dip into, but there weren't, but they were more policy statement based, not with those clear delineation lines. So, as kind of a compromise measure, if you will, um, I at least brought the numbers in that debt per capita up into 2017 dollars. So that if, if we wanted to still use the 2008 metrics that they were giving us, um, so on that metric in 2017 dollars. Hurrah, we now fall in the moderate band for overall net debt per capita um, because $5,000 in today's dollars, in 2008 dollars equals 5714 in 2017 dollars. And we were, as of June 30th of 16, at 5016 And we are now actually below that. I will not give you an actual number in print until the audit is completed. But um, at the moment, we are in the 4000s for that. So we can say solidly, we are now in the moderate. One of the things I wanted to highlight, though, is, and we, this is, I think, tagging the conversation that we had last time. This is from Standard & Poor. They have overall net debt per capita, and then they have overall net debt as percent of market value. And you have both of those things on your dashboard. Yeah. And what I really want to highlight is that we have completely contradictory results in our measurement on those. So. In the overall net debt as percent of market value, we are well below 3%, or we're significantly below 3%. So according to this guideline, great job, guys. We're below 3%. That's what they want to see. But on the debt per capita, we are just barely sneaking into the moderate range at this point. And so that makes this conversation that we had kind of at length last time, do we want to look at metrics per capita? Do we want to look at them per assessed value? Do we want to look at them both ways and then just understand that we're going to need to balance that for ourselves with the understanding that when we're really succeeding compared to our peer group in that per value sort of arena, that that reflects back to us our diverse tax base. And when we are struggling in per capita, it's because we have not as many people as we do. It, it, like the, our per capita figure is not as reflective of that tax base as the value figure is, but it's still a number we want to look at if that's what you decide to include. I just, I thought that was interesting. So yeah. even using standard and poor, you can highlight and say, wow, even with that same thing that we're measuring, we're measuring debt per some um, denominator. When we choose population as the denominator, we don't look so hot. When we choose value as the denominator, we look like rock stars. So it's just a question of which way you guys want to go and how you want to think about it. I think it needs to be presented both. The reason is that we look like rock stars because we're in an environment in which the value of the community continues to grow regardless of the level of investment. That's the nature of where we live. So while it's valuable, I think it needs to be balanced with the per capita piece. Okay. Yeah, I, I would disagree. We talked about removing the per capita piece in the past because I think it's not an accurate reflection of, it's easily skewed because the data uh, skews lo over a longer period, becomes less and less accurate because our our data figures become less and less accurate. So it kind of comes to the conversation we were having last night. What are we going to use this data for? So if we're going to use this data to set policy, I don't know if debt per capita is an accurate figure that we want to use to set to generate yep. a metric or a policy. I'd rather do something that's, that's predictable, establish that as the base, that's repeatable and consistently accurate because I think we're going to skew over time. So I, I, I would propose removing the, the debt per capita. We had a lengthy discussion about it the last time. Um, I, I think it's, um, we can always have it as a footnote somewhere else uh, and if we want to bring that up, but I think as a measurable parameter, I think it's difficult to keep consistently accurate over time. It'll be great when we do the census, like we talked about, but 
five years out, midterm, we're going to be skewed, and a year before the census, we're going to be really skewed. So I don't know how well it, I mean, you know, it's a common number. I'm not denying that. I just don't know how, I don't know what we're going to use it for. What's I can tell you, I won't use it by itself. It says I won't use the valuation piece by itself. I use them together. Yeah, exactly. But the, but the, the question is, is an indication of is our community physically healthy? Right, and and what is, are we being prudent with our policies and our procedures? And if that's not an accurate measurement of that, I don't know what what use that is, other th other than just a an ammunition piece for somebody who wants to use that as a reference. Well, point. all of that can happen, right? Right. I, I, and, and I guess I'd be in the place as, as I talked about it. I think if you go to page four, which of the policy that we have in front of us, the current policy, and we're going to get to redoing that policy, but for now it really calls out certain things that the policy calls for to be measured and reported on, and debt per capita is the first item on the list. So I think, and I, and I think there was, maybe you could, because we had a little bit of a conversation today, and I'll probably butcher this, but so you can jump in as, as soon as I go awry. But I think your vision of this, we, we wanted this to just, to kind of be a dashboard, a quick look. I love the arrows to say, okay, which direction are we going? But your vision was when this goes available online that someone could click on this and it would take you into a greater level of detail where you could have some of those explanations about is this what does this mean and some of the limitations. Is that an accurate sort yeah. of vision of what you're thinking about? Yeah, we keep giving this to you as a paper sheet, but the reality mm -hmm. is that this will be available online. Mm -hmm. And that's how we're moving towards most of our documents. And so what I would like it to be is um, you know, where you see in blueprint now, imagine those as hyperlinks. You're curious about total debt as a percent of state full valuation. You click on that hyperlink, and it's going to bring you to a section of the website that's going to show you the 10-year trend in that figure, and it's going to give you some narrative, very similar to what you received in your packets last time, mm -hmm. as to what that means. How do we interpret that? What are the things that might be fault, you know, playing into that? And then once um, your committee has established the policy statement, that you're going to use to kind of govern yourselves and the, um, the financial health of the town, if you will, or, or however you want to think of those policy statements, so the policy statements can be included in that link as well so that people can see these are the policy statements that guide this indicator. This is the 10-year history of that indicator, and here's where we are right now and what that means to us. And, and so, for example, if you continue to use debt per capita, perhaps in the commentary, uh, that there should be a rich discussion around yeah. be careful about how you use this and, yeah. and explain yeah. why. Yeah. And I would envision linking all the backup yeah. information that that's, that's produced this dashboard that provides right. a narrative commentary that says why we're yellow and sure. or green or, or what have you. I think all that, again, all that stuff is great for backup information to talk about how we got where we got. I just don't know what value that parameter is for us. What's the value in that parameter? May I ask another question? I guess I would also ask you to consider I agree that it's a, it's a common number that is really easy to calculate and we can certainly make sure it's out there somewhere for people to have. From a policy statement perspective and what I think would be really helpful is if each of these metrics that you choose to have on this I would also call your attention to the qualified applicants for the tax assistance program. I thought that was important to know each year where that number was going as perhaps a reflection of ability to pay within the community. Um, but again, it's a hard thing to have a mm. policy statement around. You certainly would not want to say, well, if we break 300 people, that's a bad thing. Well, maybe that's not a bad right. thing. Maybe it means we've just done a better job advertising the program mm -hmm. and it's not good or bad. And I would say that with debt per capita, to set a, a range, the only real way to do that would be in comparison to your peer group. And choosing that peer group, of course, is always challenging. And then also, do you shift your range if Falmouth takes out a large bond? Like what happens if our peer group decides to spend in a different manner or what happens if we continue to see a demographic shift in population to concentrations in certain communities and not in others that skews that sort of number. So I, as you're thinking about what stays on a quick snapshot, if policy statements could be part of that discussion and, and how, which metrics really lend themselves to policy statements that can be embedded in the, yeah. in the mm -hmm. fiscal policy as opposed to these are metrics that we do want to keep measuring and have recorded someplace, but they're not necessarily what we're using to govern our, our policy decisions. Right, but so I, I think for tonight's purposes, it's kind of the beating the cart before the horse, but I think the reality is 
we've been working in these metrics for a while. These are not meant to be perfect. These are meant to be a work in progress. This is only a way to kind of tip our, you know, foot in the water to move forward. We do have on the agenda tonight to talk about those policy pieces, but the reality is it's probably going to be a different, I doubt it's concluded during this sort of sitting of the council. It will be continued work. So I, I don't know where everybody, I would kind of, I like debt per capita now only because these are things we've talked about and for a variety of reasons. I'd like to kind of suggest maybe we adopt these for now with caveats saying these will be a work in progress as we get the policy statement, as we agree on the policies, then we can go back and revisit. This is just, this is just kind of a starting point. To go back and ask the question, <coughs> you can get to the root cause of any problem in five whys. Why are we using debt per capita? What is, it, what is it doing for us? What do we hope to glean from it? What do we hope to achieve from that? And I'm, I'm just not convinced that that's the right metric to measure because if it were consistent and it were a way that we could skew it or adjust it well, on an annual basis so that it wasn't, it wasn't, my, 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 my challenge is it's a compounding error, right? So you start the day of the census, it's great data because that's accurate and it's realistic. As soon as you start moving out of that, consent, that census and your, your dollar figures change but your census figures don't change and you're estimating, now you're not looking at an accurate reflection. Whereas per capita, Oh, I mean, uh, for valuation, w that's a fixed number. We look at that. That's something that, that the parameters, do, it's, a, it's more of a statistical analysis, right? The parameters don't change over time. It's an accurate representation of something. Now, we, I, I, I would agree with you. Maybe that 2.53 isn't the right, you know, maybe we set a lower number to reflect that, that debt limit. But that's the indication of what our real debt load is, I believe, not the per capita. You see what I'm saying? I, I do, but I guess, I guess what's guiding me right now mm -hmm. and, and just part of this discussion so we can put something on it is in the current policy, and I don't know the history of why we decide on these metrics that are here, that is a metric that we say we're going to measure. So that's to answer your question why. It's something that then it's being driven by policy. It is in the policy. Now we may, when we get to the policy, decide to take it out of the policy, and that's mm -hmm. fine. Then we go back and revisit. Mm -hmm. Two, I think some of the other questions is whether it's an accurate number or not, it is what the bond rating agencies use. It is a number they look at across the board, and that sits in sort of the matrix that we got that our bond underwriters are using. Um, so I don't see necessarily a reason. Again, this is, this is a work in progress. And I guess my suggestion was is there a willingness just to kind of move forward with this with the caveat that the next finance committee meeting is going to come back and revisit this. And again, Sean, I think what was your, your thought was this would be maybe in an annual snot, snapshot? I mean, we wouldn't it have to be. Yeah. So. With audio data. So once, you, once we kind of get a direction, we'll keep tracking this over time and mm -hmm. then we'll have a routine of checking in with. Checking you know, in, updating, whatever you like. Okay. If the metrics aren't working, we'll move to something Chris, may, maybe one other way to look at this and why this number <coughs> might be relevant, I bring it down to the human scale beyond the comparative. There's a, this is probably the single statistic that's relatable to people, like how much is too much, and everyone has an opinion about that, right? So rather than a range, maybe you could say if it gets above 6,000 per capita, um, that just weighs a flag. It's just a check-in, like let's find out why. Yeah. Um, I, again, I, I, if we're going to do it, I want to do it accurately. So I, I, I understand the argument behind it. I understand it's a common variable. It doesn't, uh, from, a, from a mathematical statistical standpoint, it doesn't make it right. So if I want to be accurate, we want to be concise, and we want to do something that's meaningful and, and, and consistent, that's my only argument. I'm not going to hold the process up because of that, um, but I do think that's a valid, a valid discussion to make, and certainly when mm -hmm. the policy comes up, we'll talk about it. Okay. And that's what Lewis has started her comments by saying, once you make some policy decisions, mm -hmm. it will inform okay. what, you know, what mm -hmm. we're reporting here and, and what the ranges are. Mm -hmm. I, I, and the other, I guess what, and uh, getting back to, to your comment before about the policy um, comments behind the ranges, I, I, I do like that. I think um, one of the things um, I, I guess I would ask is if there are, if there are uh, parameters in this, like the standard and poor's rating that you use, kind of let us know what those are that, are that are behind those, and then we can look at that and say, okay, that's, that's the range that we want, or that's not the range that we want. And if, if there isn't one, flag that, and then we can, then I think that's the debate to right. set, the, set the level for. And that's what I, so the four that you see there are yep. those, those are four that I can identify as. Okay. Um, so debt service as a percent of annual um, revenues, 
those, I can kind of give you, I can tell you that those are the ranges we're looking for. If that bridge is 15%, we've got a red flag waving, and that's why that's in red. Right. Um, if I have not given you a range, acceptable range, it's because I cannot find one that is industry standard accepted. So, so just let me know, if, is that standard pours? Is it all of them? Is it the cumulative right. average? Just, you know, okay. just source them. Yeah, yeah, source them. But that could yeah. be on that click, the yeah. click through, right? The yeah, click that's through. just a footnote. That's just oh, so that we, we, that's the range that we've agreed to measure because it's a bond issue. We want to, that's what we're, yep. that's what we think is important. That's a good point. We can source them up. Yep. So, um, to tie this, um, I have a couple of recommendations about this, but it's really after the policies are established on how this could, because I think that you could expand this slightly just to show. So I love the arrows concept because this is in a way to market, but then we might have a more conservative policy or less conservative policy, and we should show measurements based upon our policy as well. Yep, and you have that, in, for instance, in total debt as percent of full state valuation. That 8.5 represents yep. the maximum that you as a town allow in your current policy, whereas state allows 15. So having the source, well, okay, yeah, yep. all right. Um, so the question I have is, um, so I noticed that this is a proposed um, starting draft for the financial and fiscal policy. So um, with this dashboard, it doesn't match up to the bullets. Right. So the question I have is that, was that intentional? Is that just simply a um, you know, cut and paste or a uh, carry forward from the we past policy? We were just here two weeks ago. This is a simple format, Eric. Okay, so no, I just wanted to ask. Yeah. That so the idea was to let you see what it would look like if all of the policies that have to do with finances and fiscal health were put into one. It's a 31-page policy. Um, so just as kind of a step. And then they don't match up in um, – I actually had this conversation with Peter earlier today as well. Um, on your dashboard, you do see debt per capita. You see debt as a percent – sort of a statutory debt limit, you actually see it per policy debt limit, not statutory, because it just seems nonsensical to include um, a statutory debt limit that is so far exceeds our own limits that we put on ourselves. Um, debt is a percent of state equalized valuation you have on your dashboard. Um, annual debt service payments is a percent of budgeted expenditure. Um, you have actual annual debt service as a percent of annual revenues, and the change was made because of a conversation I had with Joe, our bond agent. He suggested that we shift over from looking at um, that as a percentage of rep expenditure to looking at it as a percentage of revenues instead. So that was under his um, guidance, and that's where that switch came in. So that could be a policy change if you want to switch. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and then you're correct. The debt service payments, the percentage of the level of overlapping net debt, we do not have on there. Um, I'm not quite sure if I personally see the value of that metric as a <coughs> annual metric, we have very little overlapping debt. We're not a district that has a high level of that, and it doesn't seem that that would make, in my opinion, the list of things for us to put at the top of our mind. Yeah, and again, and again, sorry, and again, I'm not suggesting that we don't look at these parameters. I mean, I'm, well, I'm not saying that we don't look at debt per yeah. capita as a part of the discussion. My concern is that the, the, you know, the snapshot metrics is, it's the trending data, right? So it's going to be good year one. It's going to skew. So the, then, you know, if as this group turns over, you know, you're going to have to look at this and go, you know, four years out, how accurate is it? We may put a lot of emphasis on it this time. In three or four years, how much emphasis are you going to put on it? Because it's, it's now not trending correctly, yeah. right? You know what I mean? It's not, I'm not saying we'd ignore it. I'm not saying get rid of yeah. it completely. Yeah. I'm just saying don't highlight it as a – as a metric because of the inconsistencies associated with that metric. So I'm not arguing with the metric. I'm, it's, it's valuable information. I'm just saying from a, from a accuracy standpoint yep. and, a, and a consistency standpoint. Um, I also, as we discussed yesterday in the joint finance, uh, I can envision uh, page two right next to this or uh, some indication of it with the school parameters as well. With their outcome. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, right. Yep. And then so. Right. I think to move this conversation forward, so I guess just kind of the will of where we are, I, my thought was this is kind of, you know, let's, if, if it's okay with everybody, we land here, we share this with the council about these, but this is the work we're doing, with the caveat that then we need to come back and revisit this. But I'd like to get the rest of the council's feedback about is this valuable, does it make sense, are we on the right track? And then the caveat will be, just as, you know, as, as Sean has looked ahead, you've looked ahead, we need to go now go through the policy, and that will be the next item is how are we going to do that, how are we going to move forward, then 
that's the place to have discussions about are those the right metrics to be using. And does anybody, and when we get there, and I'll ask whether we have the history of where they came from in the first place, but that's a different different discussion. So on this subject, what's what's the will of the group? I mean, what do we want to do with this? I want to move this forward. Yes, yeah, yeah. I'm fine with that. Um, with, the re with the metrics that I'm assuming that uh, there was agreement that the metrics that the school board set last year will probably come forward because it sounded like they were looking at them. I mean, I'll take whatever they recommend, but they should be included in this. Uh, yeah, yeah. In the end. yeah. So are you guys okay with just sharing this as a, as a draft with yeah. the rest of the council? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. With the caveats that we just talked about? Yeah, that's fine. May I ask that, so may I propose that it's possible that we move forward this one that um, does not include the range on the far left simply because we don't have ranges for all of them as we're waiting for those policy decisions. So, and you're, what, you're, what you're moving towards council, could we forward them this? No, I, yeah. Oh, sorry. No, 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 I was going to suggest, I like, I like the concept of the one with the ranges. Yeah. Okay. And I think what we'll give the council is where we've left it blank. Okay. Is, 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 is a work in progress to figure out what we want to show. These ranges reflect current policy, which may, right. may change as we yep. Yep. review. Yep. And just get their feedback about does this do it for them, and maybe that's where we get some of the conversation again around right. is, but just to kind of conceptually move it forward. I suspect your eyes will glaze over. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for your fine work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Probably this is true. Now order number six. <laughs> yeah. okay. so I, I do want to uh, make one recommendation if I can. So um, with the policy, which I like how it's structured, um, I would like to see maybe the first, um, just move everything down, but the very first one could talk about benchmarking and this type of reporting um, so that it becomes standardized and that there's a continuation of this type of reporting. Um, because that's really where I think, I'll take it up, because um, right now, um, I think it's in debt, right now this, these ratio analysis is in the debt management policy. Mm -hmm. And not all of these ratios are um, totally or solely related to debt. Yes. So I think that if you call them out and just simply put it into a benchmarking or a reporting or some type of, um, that way it would be also easily changeable going forward if we determine that one of these ratios should change. Well, this is it doesn't impact. Some of these you metrics that you've chosen I don't think are rooted in policy. Right, right. 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 So, so I think some policy are not necessarily in the. Yeah. So so did so Ms. Crockett, you know what I'm talking yep. about? Yep. Basically, basically, everything that's on page four, or that starts on page three, I don't know, page four in that paragraph that the town shall use objective and answer, that could be in essence maybe the whole policy, and then it talks that maybe there should be a paragraph that talks about how this will be used in a general sense in helping develop policies relating to the other sections that are in here. Okay. And I, I might suggest we even, that's where we might impose, self-impose a, uh, yearly check-in staff is to track these uh, agreed upon metrics and provide an annual report to the finance committee just so it's yeah, codified. So maybe, maybe time it around when we do get the audits back and stuff. So yep, all, we could. All tied into audit statements and stuff. Yeah, and as part of that I think we can provide maybe some introductory language just to kind of knit it, knit it together to talk about what follows because yeah. we just literally put it together, yeah. put it together or drop. Well, I think in that in section, because I think I saw this someplace, um, it could talk about, at least from a policy perspective, a, a basic definition for each of those and how it's calculated. You know, it becomes almost a definition document for this, um, for this year. As well as maybe giving a disclaimer that says, you know, not all ratios, you know, I can't think of it right now off my top of my head, but, you know, it's kind of like that warning, be careful of what you read and how you understand something because it may not be by itself meaningful unless it's compared against another number. You know, you know, just kind of a general statement. Cautionary so guidance. Caution. Yeah, these are into, yeah. And what Because debt per capita can't be used by itself. So. One of the nice things, though, is that all of, these all of these policies and everything, the general public does not access them in a paper form. They, again, access them online. And so right. these can all be hyperlinked in the same yeah. manner. So as we're talking about the metrics, they can be immediately hyperlinked to, in that cautionary tales piece, to here's the greater dive and, and larger picture for a better understanding of how these all work together. Right. And I think while debt, obviously we're focusing a lot on debt for four or five of these metrics that are on debt, I think the whole, the idea, my goal for the snapshot was to have the financial health of the town, not just the debt management policy. Yep. Yep. You know, so. 
Well, as long as they tie back into the rating piece, I think that's a yeah. that's the, that is the best bet. Yeah. 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 And as part of the drafting, I'd love to be able to pare these things down. I mean, to have 31 pages. I'm not sure if it's all yeah. necessary. Right. A so lot of work well. there. Mm -hmm. So I guess just jumping ahead. So how do, how do you? I guess that's you know one of the questions. So how do we want to go to the next step with now that it's consolidated? Are we moving um, on to do? Well, I mean, Sean kind of got there. So I don't know if you want to go back to that. I mean, however you want to get there. Um, but while we're on the topic, do we want to? I want staff to take a staff of streamlining it first. Do we want to? Yeah. Between now and the next finance committee meeting. So if you, if you're concerned about, to give it to somebody else. Right. But if you're concerned about yeah. some of the metrics, would that be where you could maybe suggest yeah. metrics you'd, you'd rather yeah. see embedded into it, and we can then have a conversation the next time we come around? Yeah, I mean, I think it, uh, you know, why don't we, why don't we all take the 31 pages that we have here, give it a cursory look over, and see yep. what we, what we can ferret out or what we can kind of consolidate, and yeah, I mean, that's, and try and have that ready. Let's, for the let's share the load. We'll take the responsibility of kind of drafting and knitting it together a little more cohesively. If you can give some thought to kind of the policy pieces of it mm -hmm. in terms of, yep. okay. um, and maybe make fairly quick work of this. Yep. Um, sorry, is the capital? It's the last mm -hmm. one. Is it? Is it? I didn't see it here. Maybe I'm just my. I got brand new glasses. It's on page 23. Wait, I, I'm not wearing them because I'm getting headaches already. Oh, there it is. Okay. All right. I just want to make sure I was there. Okay. One of the things that you're thinking about policy statements and so forth, I think that, that I believe that you were all given some sort of access to this document at the beginning of the year, last year. Um, it does a really great job of breaking down all of the metrics. I, I want to say all of the metrics you will find on this dashboard have some at least close cousin in here. So, for example, um, expenditures. So we, I have on here. Um, Expenditure as a percent of general fund expenditure as a percent of assessed value, and you will find indicator 10 in your ICMA manual is expenditure per capita. No reason to explain again why I've gone the other way. Um, but within each of those indicators, not only do they explain really why people find them useful, but at the end of each of those sections is suggestions for policy statements. Yes. So those are some great resources if you're kind of wondering, well, what would a policy statement look like for expenditures per um, assessed value? Here's some ideas for you if you want to look at those. I did have a question on page eight of this. Um, it says equipment reserve fund. It's written up. We've never really done that, have we? No. And it, it kind of reads that we should be doing that. So I, I don't know what our thoughts should be on that. And I'd be curious, maybe <laughs> all of you could. Sorry. <laughs> No. Well, the reason why I started laughing is because we had a citizen that talked about setting up a depreciation account, which is in essence what the equipment reserve fund is. Right. Right. I thought we did that for some smaller pieces of equipment, not no. necessarily big ticket items like we fire. We budget equipment. them as an operational expense, but we, we've not, since I've been here, had the practice of funding for future purchase. Well, don't we? Uh, uh, but things like, let's say, a gate or something doesn't come out of the beach, the beach fund, or something where it's act or it's utilized. More or or community service might come out of a yeah, a I different account kind of thing. I suppose so. Uh, yeah, I, I see what you mean. Uh, there are occasions where the funding does come from a separate fund, right. um, but not but certainly not bigger ticket items like fire trucks and dump trucks. And well, like ambulances that. we do fund them out of the MS reserve. Uh, those are non-tax dollars. Some uh, equipment comes out of the uh, special. I can't remember the name of that special account that the police department has from federal funds. Asset forfeiture. Asset forfeiture. Asset forfeiture. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. But as a question to this group, I mean, the way it reads, it says an equipment reserve fund to be set up. So it sounds like, so if that's our intent, it should stay in. Is that six years, though? Well, well whatever this was. was whatever this was. It's either 12 or 13, so you haven't, you haven't missed the deadline yet. But it's a question, I mean, for this group. You can set up the fund. You don't have to fund it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it says the way well, it's set up a fund for capital equipment and will be financed sufficiently to ensure the adequate funds are available to purchase replacement equipment, blah, 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 blah. So yeah. Yeah. if it stays in, then I think we need to think about what that means. Right. So it's just yeah. as, as we comment, what do we want to do with that? It's going to be yeah. Yeah. someone at some point might ask a question. So well, you're right. That's, and again, that's the policy discussion, right? So just pay me now or pay me later. And right, then exactly when, you, when you get into that depreciation type of thing, that you know, are, are you funding? Are the are the are you? Well, the argument is that are the people who are utilizing the asset not funding it, or the people who are funding it they don't get to utilize the asset, or some 
the some theory of right. longer term borrowing. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that if you if you build it in now for that fire engine ten years from now, right. people today are paying for the fire engine they're gonna benefit from down the road. But or, or maybe not. <laughs> yeah. Or they maybe not or maybe they won't benefit from right. Right, but I just yeah. think from a policy yeah, 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 perspective, yeah. that's a pretty big yep. chunk yep. that's in yep. here. Yep. We should just ask, do we still want it to be in there? And then mm -hmm. as we have our discussions about and we had the discussion last night about longer term. Mm -hmm. That's a longer term conversation about do we start funding some of these things so you smooth out the. Well, and I think uh, I can't remember. There was a side conversation amongst maybe two of us or something about after Mr. Sankas. No, I had a conversation for even maybe having like a one year program pilot or two year mm -hmm. pilot and seeing how it works because the depreciation approach is how you create is basically the calculation. Right. Right. Use depreciation to calculate what you're going to finance, but and you know, yeah. you know, use one smaller account that has, doesn't have that large of an impact, and see how it works and what the true impact is mm -hmm. from an analytical but perspective. Doesn't that get challenged though? Because we do a lot of, um, we don't necessarily depreciate all our assets down to zero. We we end up transferring them at a certain point to. So we, we get to recoup we some of that. Fixed, fixed assets, and that, that includes depreciation every year. Yeah, but don't we don't we do things like you know some of the apparatus or equipment? Let's say if we're if it's past our longevity, we may sell it to another municipality, another town at a. That doesn't that doesn't hurt you though. Okay. Okay. I, I just want to uh, mention the interplay with the fund balance policy. Right now, the policy, if you if the fund balance uh, is above a certain percentage, um, the excess money is available for capital funding capital right. purchases. Yep. Yep. It could be simply that you designate that excess to your equipment reserve, and so it, it's sitting there and available to you. So, I think so, so, so long as you need to clean it up somehow. So long as you follow that policy, that you know, it's almost like the in like thing. So, so if you're going to depreciate this fire truck, and you're going to reserve that in order to buy the next fire truck, and then mm -hmm. you sell the asset before its depreciable life is complete. And your theory is that you take whatever you sell it for and you actually use it to yeah, offset the, right. well, that, the the missing co not the missing the cost missing but piece. Yeah. that missing piece with the new purchase. So it's pretty intrinsic accounting because I mean um, most municipalities, what I know, because I think that's what Falmouth does actually. If I'm if that's why their fund balances are so large, and that is, but you put it into a big pool and it's just the theory is well, it's all paying for something eventually at some point. They don't do this. You know, cost. Uh, dedicated yeah, it's not, it's not a cost for dedicated. I mean, at least what I know. I don't know if that's true with them, but I, that's what I heard. So, if it is, it would be the restricted portion. It's dedicated. Yeah, it has to go into a restricted. But fund it balance. shows as an overall fund balance. It's cash from the hand. So, so I don't know. As when you guys give comments, maybe yep. you could say where you kind of land on where this is in, how mm -hmm. modified. I mean, the pilot could be, and I've heard it talked about before. When we know we got some of the equipment, the fire equipment. start by just, you know, setting a fund yeah. up for designated equipment. Right. I, well, I mean, the bottom line, though, is, is that at the end of the day, it's got to be funded somehow, right? It's either funded now or, or it's funded with long-term debt, you know, right? So, I mean, if we're looking at operational expenses right now and trying to keep those in check, putting money into an account is going it, to, oh, it still I'm hits sure. our bottom line, right? Well, yeah, I'm sure that's why we haven't done it. Well, uh, right, but I mean that's 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 a that's a big decision to make. Right. right. So all I'm saying is, yeah. I'm not trying to argue yeah. yes or no. Just yeah. saying the yeah. way this reads, yeah. Yeah. it yeah. says we should be doing this. Mm -hmm. But that's and why there was a six-year delay because there was a recognition right. that that <laughs> transition <laughs> affects the tax rate. But when, when six years up, you know, I wasn't on account in this. Four more years. Passed. I mean, this is the most <laughs> recent policy that's been adopted. 2012. This was passed. Oh, was it? I do, I I see that. Um, not necessarily, but in 2012, um, the town did pass the percentages of types of debt that's oh, okay. in the policy. So sometime after March 21, 2012, this policy was enacted. So we can kick it down the road, but it, we may not want to. Can we that. just add another in front of the six? <laughs> <laughs> so, I, so I have a question regarding this, just to complete a thought I'm thinking through. So with this conversation about um, the expense or the equipment account, and if we did increase fund balance to be able to put that into that. These ratios that we're looking at would probably, in the long term, improve with anything that deals with expenses. You know, funded expenses, or I'm sorry, uh, which one is it? In that we would have debt. debt. I mean, debt. The, debt, the debt per capita as well as debt per capita income they would that be will go down. To go down. Right. However, your expenditure as 
um, a percent of assessed value may go up. Right. I mean, it really right. is just going to be a question of do you have the interest in having your tax rate more closely reflect the service level provision yep. by having it in yep. incorporated into your expenditure and operating budget, or do you want to continue to have the money be bonded for longer? Yep. But it would make a lot of these numbers look nicer, and some of them look scarier. Yes. But I think that's the, that's the good thing about the metrics, is that when we make those policies, we'll see the impact on yeah. those variables, right. and we'll, that's when we'll determine it's part the decision-making. And it's right. part of the narrative when you go, when, and this is longer term, you know, 10 years down the line after we've established it, when councils go and change policy, you're going to then need to show a change within, within this because it'll show a negative trend um, or, or, or too big of a positive trend, and so you'll have to have a footnote that says in 2000 and 19, the council changed its policy, therefore impacting it. Just like the reval year, it throws your right and everything up. That one year, I can't remember. I can't remember the year. That one year, we went from 1.2 billion to two and a half billion dollars overnight. Mm -hmm. Threw everything off. Mm -hmm. Yes, it would. So, yep. So, on summary, on the debt policy, you guys are going to take us. I think, yep. unless I'm put, throwing you under the bus, you're going to help with the words and cleaning it up and shortening and condensing or yeah, folding in the dashboarding piece, kind of the importance of how it's going to be yeah. used. And, and we're, yep. and we're going to work on any, some of the metrics that we want, um, have a conversation around that, and, and anything else that we see is from a policy perspective, like the equipment fund, if we see anything else, we'll kind of bring to your attention and be on the docket for the next meeting for conversation. Does that make sense? Yeah. When is the yeah. next meeting? October 17th. Yeah. October. Uh, Tuesday, October 17th. So Does that work, or is that not? It's a solid month. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was shorter between this yeah, meeting and last meeting. Yeah. Like I, I yeah. guess for my, my clarity, too, I mean, these are policies that we've got in place. So I'm looking at this, you know, again, looking at the local debt limits and stuff. What happens if we exceed those? Nothing, right? It's just a policy that we are self-imposed. It's self-imposed. Yeah, it's like the legislature. Well, there's some. You never would. There, there's some. No, I understand that, but I'm just, I, it's always the so what, right? So if yeah. we don't meet this, what is that? Does that trigger a discussion? Does it just go in as well, a sure. asterisk that says we did, you know, that's one area, whatever? Well, so I, I, think, I think the purpose of the dashboard would say, so the, where the arrows are going down, and that's a good thing, then mm -hmm. that's great. Sure. But I think what you're trying to flag for us it, with this metrics is where something's yeah. Yeah. not going in the right direction should right. spark that conversation right. as a finance committee and and, um, you're, and you're putting in a system that future staff will be the constant and yeah. will be reporting this. Yeah. Uh, I can tell you past finance committees have, were not as energetic and knowledgeable and didn't do as, you know, as deep a dive as this, and we can expect that could happen in the future. This sets some things in motion that, uh, that we'll be reporting back to them. I mean, are you I mean one of the things that I had told when we started changing, and Tom has been great because I remember first coming in this time around, um, Tom changed the entire budget process and the budget yeah, document. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, as part of the executive summary of that document, there should also be a section that talks about um, fiscal policy compliance and what the impact of this budget is being presented. You know, where are we before the budget and what is our – not compliance, but where are we after the fact so that well, it should be – What budget. is the impact of it? Because mm -hmm. if his recommendations for uh, long-term debt and uh, bonding – puts us over a particular area, it should be known and it should be notated in the executive summary so that we can then have a executive level conversation about yep. what that does to us and how do we get below the threshold if that's what I desire, you know, in a long kind of a, that gets into the kind of like the forecasting piece that I want to get into, that part of it. Yep. Yep. And Chris, to answer your question, there are, there are some things embedded in here. There are a couple things that are state mandates. So there are some things that aren't, that are outside of our to, if that makes any sense. I mean, no, I guess. Statutory I mean, right, state. If you're, right. If you're calling out statute, then that yeah. is. So, that so there are some things sure, that we're measuring. Sure. If you're calling out statute, do you really need to rewrite the whole statute? I don't think we rewrite the whole thing. We just had to say. Reference it. Well, that's my point. Because I, I, I shouldn't say rewrite it. Actually, write the entire statute and, and the policy should be just a reference and a statement saying that we support, you know, right? We're on the same page. Anything else on the debt policy? Then going back a little bit on the agenda, we did, last time we looked at um, sort of a debt, the different debt schedules. Um, we did ask 
for what, when we looked at it last time, what it didn't include in sort of where the, the debt service went and the outstanding principal went, and we didn't include the ongoing, you know, capital improvements. And what they've added this time is they've gone back in and said, what does it do to the numbers when we look at two, four, we added five, because our average over the last three years has been a little over five. Um, so it just gives you a sense of how that impacts the balance, I think. <coughs> so just if I could get clarity, though, on, on our, uh, our audited statement from page one, it looks like over the last three years we haven't exceeded two. That, uh, that's just capital equipment. So this... That's that's the new debt that we're taking on for capital. Well, I'm sorry, that's not all bonded. That's no, not all reflected in. Yeah, I'm sorry, in I missed the sorry. first part of the question. Yeah, I'm just I'm looking at our our, our balance sheets. Yep. And I'm looking at capital equipment. That's not all necessarily new bonded debt. Not necessarily no. Okay. That's all right. That's fine. But yeah, that's, that answers my question. Yeah, sorry. So so I think I mean I think this is helpful. I think you know it it, it shows what happens what. The, the missing pieces that we're still working on to combine would be, you know, this does not include um, any of the facilities plan for the school, so that's not not in these numbers. So that's that's the next step is to try mm -hmm. to work pull that in with the board of education, and I think they're working mm -hmm. on it um, so we can pull this in. So with that, do any any questions or comments or yeah, yeah. I'm trying to I'm trying to find the fences. So the, on uh, page. Uh, the two million CIP page. Yes. Mm -hmm. It says um, so. This, if I, I just want to make sure I'm reading this right. Obviously, the year the existing principal, the new public safety building, and then two million dollars in additional principal. And there's nothing being retired in 18. Yeah, that was my. So question. okay, so um, I can't remember why. Why did that happen, Tom? You have to start somewhere. I think. Aren't we retiring debt? Some debt this year? Of course we are. Right. Um, so, uh, I'm sorry, I don't remember no, why okay. I left that last point. It's nope. consistent across all the models. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think, wasn't, what? It, wasn't it the 84 was with the debt that you had anticipated in the 84? The beginning the balance. balance. So it's in the beginning. Because there's an October beginning. payment of... That sounds like a really good reason, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so so what I'm looking at. <laughs> that 84 mm -hmm. is reflective of after the payment. Right, right. That's so the, the big one that's in October. 18. Yeah. So it would have been double dipping for me to gotcha. put the amount of money yeah. that was also retired. So that was your computer. starting point. Yeah. 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 So I just wanted, for comparison purposes, I was actually really trying to get to the principal outstanding. So if I read this right, if I compare $2 million to four, my principal outstanding balance, by adding four, it only increases by $2 million. Right, because you, the other one should represent $2 million. Another two on top of. I, I'm sorry, I'm looking for the net change. Total it's, a, it's, about the, it's about the principal. Oh, that's just the principal balance of four million. So if you look at the two, the principal is outstanding 107.6. When you go to four, you're adding two, so it's 109.6. So right. that's their symmetry. That seems to make sense. If that's oh, I'm looking at the wrong one. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at what the, uh, not the, not the net change of two to four, I'm looking at that. Um, the rate of the word. Um, I'm, I'm looking at how slow, or I want to look at how slow is the debt being retired as a result of consistently going either two or four million dollars every year. So you're retiring more debt per year. It's probably just a per, you're just using a percentage, right? Or is that? So I am using um, the debt schedules that we were given to us by. Bond Council. Okay. I'm happy to share it. Many nope. pages. <laughs> no, no, we're good. Uh, we're good. So, um, so the um, starting with this kind of base existing principle, adding on the facility principle, and then um, kind of telling the worksheets to say, okay, if we add on, for instance, when you add on two million dollars in, um, we bond those CIPs for ten years. Yeah. So the principal payment each year is two hundred thousand dollars, and so th it gets added on. But some of these facility principal payments are not going to be a 10-year. They're going to be a, a 5 or a 15 or a okay. 30. And so there's variation. It's not a straight across the line amount. I think that that accounts for some of the variation that you see in the debt retirement is how much does, how long have we bonded that thing for and what is our requirement in paying back based on that length of bond? But there's some interesting symmetry. So if you go to the first page, current debt plus facilities plan in 2043, there's 
principal remaining is 13 million. By adding 2 million on top of that, it jumps to the principal remaining of being 23 million, so it jumps 10. Then by adding 4, it goes to 32. So, so that it really reduces how quickly that sort of principal. Yeah, and that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a comp. You know, so for two. I'm looking at the wrong. I really need to look at the debt retired row. Our but, column, right? but just adding two slows down the debt retirement of that time frame by 10 minutes. So right. it's kind of a multiplier effect. And by the time that you've reached 6 million annual CIP borrowing, um, it starts to get a little challenging. Um, when And I have not included your debt service on these lines. It, we decided that it was just unreasonable to keep asking Joe to run numbers for us with yeah. kind of um, mythic sort of placement yeah. of projects. Um, so I'm hoping that this gives you the information you need, and then as we have some more settling down, maybe after the comp plan is settled and we know priorities a little bit more. And apparently the school is going to make some final decisions in the month of October. I know, don't know the date of their meeting, yeah. um, so I can't promise it for your next meeting, but if it's available, uh, I think we can fold that information in quite easily and rerun these models based on their projected investment needs. Uh, hopefully we'll go down there. Sort of the conversation last night, but what do we do with that? If then we find we've got projects layered on top of each other in the same time frame, right. so we can start mm -hmm. thinking about do we stagger right. those a little differently maybe, the timing-wise. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and to confuse things more, I know part of the analysis the schools, and this is why it's been hung up a bit, is that uh, they've got some big decisions, policy decisions, in terms of their K-2 schools. Mm -hmm. One of the options is to uh, close them and consult, build one consolidated. Yeah. There's huge operational savings, so there's uh, they're spending the time to do a very detailed ROI analysis. That wouldn't be seen here, of course. Yeah. We're just looking at taking on new debt. Right. Um, so that I just so flag it. Well, that's where the forecasting piece comes in because the forecast would have the debt service in it, and presumably the, the expenditure office. forecast would look at operational expense. So, uh, it, we, can I ask? May I ask? Can I ask? One of the things well, I did meet with Julie a couple of days um, late last week to kind of talk about this. One of the things that I also would kind of encourage us to think about is that we do have this comp plan process happening. We know from what we're hearing already that there are some priorities that are maybe going to come to the surface that are going to change some of these projections on the town side as far as these are staff identified needs mm -hmm. and staff identified kind of general short, medium, long range needs. The comp plan may swoop in and from the people say, actually we see your needs, but we would like to change your priority of those needs. Sure. Um, and then also when we layer that school piece in, like let's just imagine a world where they do build a new building of some form. Well then that town hall kind of improvement or, or, or need for more space may suddenly not be there any longer. We need to reassess even the staff list because if a new build or if the library expands in a certain way or, you know, or, or if a community center is built, what does that mean as far as the town hall may then be able to remove IT, remove the school department, and then there isn't a challenge with enough meeting space and so forth within this building. So I, I just want to, yes, we'll have better data come October, but I would still strongly encourage yeah. us to consider what, before we say, well, this is what these are going to look like over the next 30 years. I don't think you can do that. How can we reshuffle? You can't do that because you don't even know in 10 years what a bond's going to look like for this stuff. So right. it's just, a, it, it, to me, it's a trending analysis to say, okay, Right now, a snapshot right now, we know we can predict what's coming down the road. We're putting it in play. These numbers are just guidelines. That, that we can't, we're, I don't think we're, we're planning on using this as a hard, fast rule to say, we expect in 2037 to only have 4 million uh, or uh, principal of 30 million. I don't think we can say that because we don't no. know what their rates are going to be. We don't know how, what their projects are going to cost. We don't know what's, what we may push a lot of this stuff off because it's all going to be voter approved anyway. But what the exercise might be helpful at is we want to change our historical practice of, of uh, bonding for capital purchases year over year or yep. cut it in half or do something different. Uh, that's going to have a, an effect on what we can do, when we can do it, and how we yep. pay for it, right? Absolutely. Um, so this, this is helpful, I think, to start that conversation right. and to make some choices. Right. Yeah, I, mean it, and it, I mean, what this does illustrate, is so if we don't pay anything in capital improvements, not a reality, but but the principal. What it does show is the principal gets to 13 million. If we use six million dollars a year, that principal that time frame is 42 million. So it, it, how we decide? Get your reference. 
yeah, how we decide in the amount of money, how we just, because we, we're trying to move stuff from capital to operations, but then that has the short-term impact of hitting tax rate too. Right. Of course. And, and so, but I think we were trying to move some stuff that we had out. Um, and that's, and I, I, just circling back to the, when we look at the policy, we have some pretty clear definitions of what should be capitalized versus not. And I'm not sure we're totally, it would be interesting to look at that to make sure we're following that for a letter too. If we need to modify that, we probably should. So any other questions on debt? Um, the last item on the agenda was really to kind of recap the Joint Finance Committee last night. Do any of you want to? <laughs> no. Watch the uh, film. Yeah, watch the film. <laughs> um, I think generally for the audience at home, we, we try to get together to really have, it was really a conversation about, one conversation was what worked in the budget process, what didn't work this year, and we worked through that and we had some observations and thoughts, so that's still kind of a work in progress. We then talked a little bit about the value of financial modeling, the difficulty of it, and other things. And we kind of, I think, at the end of the evening, and you guys can help me, thinking that we are going to try to move forward in some fashion. That's still a work in progress. The intent was that we did decide as a joint finance committee that we're going to continue to meet and continue to work right through transitions. And we do look ahead to next year. I think that's an important to kind of keep the momentum going and conversations going. Is anything else come out of last night, guys? The budget process starts next week? No, two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, I think most importantly, the group wants to keep meeting. Yeah. So um, right. yeah. I think yeah, yeah, no, I cover date, right? I, yeah, yeah, I mean, I think all kidding aside, I think the, the process is working. I, I personally perceive the process is working well. Um, I think uh, we're strengthening those relationships. I think we're, we're, um, we're have, we're, I think the conversation is going to start moving more into maybe a little bit more into the weeds, which are a little bit more concise. I think we're, we were this year kind of at the 50,000 foot level and eased into it a little bit, but I think we'll start getting into more of when we do metrics and things like that. We'll be able to start sharing more data and looking at more stuff. So, well, that, that just reminds me. We did talk about you brought up metrics too about mm -hmm. the, the school, the ones the school had decided on. Is that appropriate to start using? I think they we're going to come back and yep. review that with us. And mm -hmm. So that is a general recap. I think the last item on the agenda, well, item five on the agenda was talk about, and we've already talked about the next meeting for this group is October 17th at 6 p.m. Um, and then the item six is public comment. Does anybody have any comments, any thoughts? So I guess with that. Could I just uh, throw something out? It may be a future finance committee. <coughs> Mike Shaw has expressed an interest in maybe taking you on a field trip. Um, I've challenged staff, and, and Mike's right in the middle of it. Uh, a big part of our capital annual borrowing has to do with vehicles and, and, and uh, <coughs> equipment. Yeah. Um, and much of that is predicated on established vehicle equipment replacement schedules. And I'm really starting, uh, I'm having them evaluate and challenge some of the assumptions in that. When do we retire and replace and those sorts of things. Um, he's doing some interesting analysis. Um, they actually are tracking costs for uh, maintenance of equipment over its lifespan. And you can see a very clear trend at the end of the life, no surprise, the, the costs do increase. Um, and I've always had this running joke with him. I said, stop, he keeps his vehicles very clean. I mean, yeah. how many times have you seen uh, all of his vehicles are, and that's really uh, a matter of pride um, and practice, because he gives them time each day to, to wash the vehicles down. That's one of the reasons we're able to keep them. But he says, uh, I'd really love you to come down and see one on lift and appreciate, you know, what's happening underneath the vehicle. They may look good on the outside, but I've got broken frames and rust and, so I think there might be some value there. Yeah. Um, the other thing is we have undertaken phase one of a um, subsurface drain um, survey. It was funded through a CIP, the company doing television work on all of our um, drains. And uh, they're to the point that they'd love to share some of the initial results. Um, that's mm -hmm. going to really inform sort of investments going forward, and it could be large investments. I don't know. Is that all East Grand, or is that? Uh, that's townwide is the intention. Oh, okay. It's a massive undertaking. Um, so at some point, again, it's probably the next finance committee would like to maybe engage you in a meeting down there. May I toss in something about public works as well? Kind of tying to the sure. truck. Um, <laughs> it's kind of a, uh, we've been looking for opportunities to really share with people some of the things that they should be really proud of our department for. And um, the, the trucks being kept so clean and, and talking about when we replace them, I was speaking with another 
municipal manager in the area, um, and we were talking about replacement schedules, and that manager mentioned that their spot replacement schedule is actually five years sooner than ours. And he was amazed that we were able to keep our plows on the road for as long as we were. And I think a lot of that um, can be really attributed to the fine work that our mechanic staff yep. does at Public Works. And that's something that um, as far as real, we're not paying anything more for these trucks. We're all, you know, this is another community, that's in a large community that's paying just as much for their plow trucks as we are and running them just as many miles, but that we're able to get 50% more life out of that investment than some of our neighboring communities is something I think that we should be really proud of and that the people should need to hear. Yeah, they do a great job. Yeah. Okay. So, adjourn? Okay. Second. Move. <laughs> All favor? Opposed. <laughs> You're opposed. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs>